Is it working? There it is, yeah. Well, good evening. Would you all please stand? I guess today's just the day that microphones are going to mess up or the preachers can't get it right. So, listen, I'm so glad that you guys have uh, decided to gather with us this evening. And so we're just going to go ahead and get ready to worship. So can we just get our minds right and just get our minds on Jesus? And so can we just invite him into this place right now? Father, we love you, God, as we thank you so much, God, for this evening. God, as we just pray, Lord, that you would be magnified, that you would be exalted, the God that we are here to receive from you. So I pray, Lord, that you would pour out a blessing. And it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Well, as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson foe, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. My cares all pass, I'm home at last and never to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Oh, Satan says, may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. Oh, but my Lord goes ahead and leaves whatever he's hiding. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face and there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. My cares all pass, I'm home at last, never to rejoice. Now when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then the Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep, and he leads me gently on through this world below. Well, he's a real friend to me, and oh, I love him so, and oh, I want to see him look upon his face, and there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, my cares all pass. I'm home at last, never to rejoice. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. My cares all pass. I'm home at last, never to rejoice. undefeated one my life and my salvation when the wicked my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell oh he's omnipotent omnipotent almighty defender my victory my refuge the one i run to you are the god yes you are the god of the breakthrough oh yes breakthrough you are the god of the breakthrough when i can't see my way through and i really don't know what to do i look to you breakthrough the walls come down when i shout through Strongholds break when I break through. So I want to praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthroughs. You are, yes. You are the undefeated one. My life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell.
omnipotent, almighty, defender, my victory. Well, my refuge, the one I run to, you are the God, yes, you are the God of the breakthrough. Oh, yes, breakthrough, you are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through, and I really don't know what to do, I look to you, breakthrough. Walls come down when I shout through. Strongholds break when I break through So I want to praise you You are the God You are the God of the breakthrough Breakthrough in my heart Breakthrough in my mind Breakthrough in my spirit Breakthrough in my soul Breakthrough in my weakness Breakthrough in my struggle You are the God you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in a lifting glory by your name, breakthrough in a dance, breakthrough in a shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my heart, the breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough when I lift and glorify your name, breakthrough when I dance, breakthrough when I shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough. You're the God of the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through, I really don't know what to do. I look to you, breakthrough. The walls come down when I shout through. Strongholds break when I break through. So I want to praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. Yeah. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, so much power. There is power yes. in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain 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 who all sufficient sacrifice so free Set a price, but our redemption, heaven's gates swing wide. Oh, swing wide. See, there's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, yes. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, all sufficient sacrifice so free. But our redemption 
Father, that we can receive healing and blessing and transformation because of you. Father, we declare your name is powerful. We declare your name is mighty. We declare your name is strong. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that you made a way. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Come on, can we just put our hands together for Jesus? Don't we serve a good God? You believe that tonight? Amen and amen. Well, go ahead, shake somebody's hand around you before you're seated. We're so glad that you came to hang out with us this evening and worship with us. Listen, I'm a social butterfly, so I like the old meet and greets. I like to go shake somebody's hand, see how somebody's doing, and get off in their business. <laughs> Well, listen, let me just share the announcements with you really quick before we take up an offering. And we're going to have somebody that's going to testify. Is, is I really do encourage you. Is, uh, I, I heard it said this way one time. Is I'm not a used car salesman. But if there was anything I was going to try to persuade you to buy into, it would be the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Um, I just encourage you. It would make you better. It makes your family better. It just makes your vision with God better, your clarity better, your direction better. And what better way than to kind of just start your year with him, kind of just a tithe of your time. Just to say, God, before we get into February and, and all the March madness and in April and May and all of that stuff, can we just set aside some time to seek your face? And it, it really is kind of a tithe of just focusing on him. So I would encourage you to, to jump on board with us. And so we're going to be here tomorrow morning at 6 in the morning. 
We'll be here tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. And we'll be here on Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and also on Saturday. So every single day the church will be open. Um, on Saturday it is at 9 p.m. And also on Mondays and on Thursdays, we also do it live at 6 p.m. So um, in the mornings we always stream because Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama actually does this. And there were hundreds of churches all across the world actually that, that tune in with them. And they just do it so well. And it's also 6 in the morning. And so it's like we just kind of let them do their thing. And I promise you it is so powerful. You really don't feel like it's, it's on a video, honestly. You feel like it's, it's here and it is powerful. So I encourage you uh, to jump on board and do that with us. And then also, don't forget, is also services, is, uh, services on Wednesday night that begin at 6.30, and also a prayer meeting um, on, on Thursday, but that, that takes place of our 21 days of prayer and fasting, so I just encourage you to, to jump on board. If, as Pastor said it this way, if you call this church, just jump on in, like, this is for you, you belong, so um, ushers, if you would, please come. As they get ready, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and you guys can get ready to give. Father, we love you. God, as we thank you so much, that God, we thank you that you first gave, that you gave your only begotten son. And so God, as we pray that, Lord, that we would give, that we would give with, with all of our time and our attention in this 21 days of prayer and fasting of this season, we would also give financially because, God, that you, you, you called us to set aside the tithe, that, that, God, that you said that if we would give to you, that we could test you in this, that, God, we would have room enough to see God, in our storehouses, that you would that you would give us more abundantly. So, God, as we thank you, and it's your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen as you guys can go ahead. Alan, I want you to go ahead and, and come up here, and, and he's going to share with us a little testimony uh, of just what, what God has done. So. These are set back there and talking, being set up. Uh, let me give you a little bit of history. Um, my father-in-law got saved, and my mother-in-law did not go to church. 1976 till, I want to say, last week, three. Well, she uh, got sick in the hospital. She got She had a stroke. She's been sick for a few years. Heart surgeries, whatever. She still wouldn't give her life to Jesus. Father in law prayed. Got married to his daughter. Well, anyway, we, um, he taught me into going to church. So I was like, hey, buddy, I'm ready. So, anyway, I started going with him and back in 1991. And we'd prayed and we'd prayed. We'd been going to church together, me and him, and the whole church, whatever. And, Mother-in-law wouldn't go, didn't have no desire to go. Anybody come around her talk about church? Not doing it. Okay, so it rocked along there. Well, got heart problems and one thing and another, nothing. So we had prayed. The church had been praying for years, family, whatever. So, yeah, here, week after Thanksgiving, she had a stroke. So she went in the hospital. So she went from the hospital to rehab. So I was going up there with, with Kay, and I was sitting there, and the Lord really just said, hey, man, why don't you just ask her if you can pray for her? I said, you know what, Patsy, can I pray for you? She said, yeah. So I just stepped over there, and I just said, hey, you know, uh, I'm just going to pray with you that the Lord will comfort you and heal you and, you know, and get you out of here and this and that one thing. And I just kind of prayed a simple prayer and didn't really pray a salvation message. I just, you know, didn't want to push the issue. You know, so so then uh, I didn't go the next night, and then uh, Kay said, my mom asked where you was at. I said, well, I, you know, whatever I was doing. So I went back the next night, and I, we got ready to leave. I said, you want me to pray with you? She's like, yeah. So I prayed with her. So then she come home. And I went in there. I think it was last Sunday night or maybe the Wednesday night before come to church and I just walked right in there to her bed and I just sat down beside her and I said hey you want to accept Jesus as your savior and she said yes and I said well praise the Lord so I let her I, I, I said a prayer with her and everything and, and I said you accept Jesus yes so I went back I don't know four, three four days later 
I said, did you accept Jesus? You're saved? She said, I don't know. So I was like, oh, Lord. All right. Not sure here. So I called one of my friends sitting right back there. I was telling him the situation. He said, well, I think it's already happened. I said, well, you know what, brother? You might be right. And so I went in there yesterday, and I said, Patsy, you give your life to Jesus. I said, you want me to pray with you? She slipped her hand out from under that cover, brother, and she grabbed my hand. She said, yes, I'm saved. And I said, well, just praise the Lord. And I said, thank you, Lord. And, you know, that may not mean a hill of beans to anybody in here, but it means a whole lot to me. Yeah. You know, from 1976, I want to say maybe all her life, and here she is, 83 years old, and she gave her life to Jesus. So there is hope, folks. Don't give up. Don't give up on whatever it is. Brandon talks about miracles and the fasting and praying. That was my miracle this week. Hey, I don't know about y'all, but. You know, and I'm thankful for that. So <clears throat> I'm going to say from 76 to um, 2023, however many years that is, she accepted the Lord. So as long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's give God some praise. Don't give up because you never know when, when God's timing is going to meet up with their timing and it's going to take place. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and get back into worship. But on that note, I actually, I do want to pray for some of these. Um, and I'm not going to be able to read all of the names. But, but as, as mentioned, as pastors brought it to you, and as I've mentioned this morning even, but Megan Watts needs a miracle in her body. And, and it really is. I mean, one day I'm sure that the whole story will be able to be told. Um, but it's just amazing that she is with us. And, and so just believe in God for her and all these others of Ty and Sister Good and Mary Martin, Bob Eikenberry, and so many others. So can we just agree together just very quickly before we go back into worship. Father, we come to you right now. As we believe, Father, for every single one of these individuals, God, as they need a touch, they have a need, Father, and it is bigger than they could even imagine, maybe. And God, as I pray, Lord, that you would send forth your healing power, your healing touch, God, to work a miracle, to do the supernatural, because this is the type of God that you are, the God that your arm is not shortened tonight. The God, that this is not possible with man, but God, all things are possible with you. So God, as we pray, Lord, that you would do this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. This is a house of worship. This is a place of prayer.
we sing come alive in the name of jesus come alive in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of jesus everything in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles i still believe you're moving i still believe you're speaking god i believe you're working all things were good i fix my eyes on heaven god i receive your vision god i believe you're working all things for good i still believe, I still believe you're moving i still believe you're speaking god i believe you're working all things for good i fix my eyes on heaven god i receive your vision god i believe you're working all things for good i still believe you're moving i still believe you're speaking god i believe you're working all things for good i fix my eyes on heaven god i receive your vision god i believe you're working all things for good oh, we sing come alive in the name of jesus come alive in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of jesus everything in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles i still believe you're moving i still believe you're speaking god i believe you're working all things for good i fix my eyes on heaven god i receive your vision god i believe you're working all things for good i still believe you're moving i still believe you're speaking god i believe you're working all things for good i fix my eyes on heaven god i receive your vision god i believe you're working all things for good God, I believe you're working all things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working all things for good. So we sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Every day in your hands you 
strong. I will trust with all that I the 
say we need you because God we know it's not by mind it's not by power but God it is by your spirit and so God as I pray Lord that we would be a people that we would align ourselves with your spirit that what your spirit wants that what your spirit desires that what your spirit is asking that we would say yes that God that we are willing that we will do what you want us to do we will go where you want us to go and we will say what you want us to say we love you so much and it's your name we pray and everybody said amen Amen. As you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. His pastor this afternoon is actually in Yukon, Oklahoma. He is actually preaching um, for his nephew, um, Kevin Fouts. So he is there in service with them. And so he's he's not here. And so um, he'll he'll uh, he'll obviously be back in town tomorrow. But and be back for tomorrow night's prayer service. Thank you, guys. Um, so that is where he is at, but I encourage you guys to remember um, just services and prayer services and whatnot. And so I'm excited to preach to you tonight as there's sometimes that you have words that are like, well, I really don't know exactly. And and for anybody that has ever preached or given a, a message before, then maybe you'd understand. But then there's other ones like, I know, I know, I know that this is what I need to preach. And tonight I'm thankful uh, sometimes that I can have the confirmation. And I just know that this is what God wants me to preach tonight. And so I will be over in Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. And I'm going to read just a few verses. I actually want to read it in the New King James Version. And it says, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Somebody say none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I have found none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? Verse 8 says, but he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone this year until I dig around it and fertilize it. In the King James, it would actually say, dung it. So dig it and dung it. But in verse 9, and then it says, and if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. And so tonight, I really have this, this simple question of this is, will you allow God to dig around your life and to also dung around your life? Because I believe that that is his desire. And for any kids that are in the room, if you don't understand what dung is, uh, I'll just give you this hint, is that there is cow dung, there is bull dung, there is horse dung. And so if you ain't caught on yet, well, just go ask your grandma or grandpa after service maybe. So would you pray with me, though? Father, we love you. God, as we thank you so much, God, for this night. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us as a people and as a church, that as your children, God, as we need you, God, as we know that desperately that you desire personal intimate relationship with us and let us have nothing less than that and it's your name that we pray and everybody said amen you see that in this in this parable jesus is saying that listen that there was this there's this vineyard and and he's come and there were these trees that i imagine that there were all types of trees and and there were trees that bear fruit and there were there was this tree that has no fruit on it that it is a fruitless tree and he's coming and he is looking for the fruit and what I've just understood, just walking with Jesus for some time now, that he desires for all of us to bear fruit. That it is the thing that he is always looking for, that you would bear fruit in his name. That John 15 says, listen, that if you abide in me and as I in you, that you will bear much fruit. And, and he'll prune that which doesn't bear fruit. And he'll, he'll prune that so it will bear some more fruit. That, that he is always looking for lives that bear fruit. And in 2023, I've just made it a declaration for my life and, and this year that, listen, God, I don't want to do anything if it doesn't bear fruit. That, God, let me as a youth pastor, let me do the events that bear fruit. That let me go and let me do things that will bear fruit. Let me have conversations that will bear fruit. Let me go out on go night that will bear fruit. That I'm just worried about bearing fruit tonight. Because this is what the master is worried about. 
is he wants every single one of us, no matter the age, no matter the demographics, no matter the, the history of the family background, no matter what it looks like, he wants all of us to bear fruit. And the thing is, though, is I think of all of us, if we could just be honest, is that we may not always bear fruit as we should. And this tree in this parable is this tree that it hasn't bear, it wasn't bearing fruit. And even last night, I was sitting there last night as, as we put Miles down and, and got ready for bed as I just went into the living room and I was just sitting there praying for tonight's message. And, and I hadn't ever really thought about this and I've known it, but I, I didn't really put two and two together that even understand this is that being alive and bearing fruit are completely different. As I think of a lot of us is that we, we come to church, we go through life and just say, well, I'm alive. But the truth is, is God is not looking for whether you're alive or not. God, I believe, is looking if you're bearing fruit. And the reason I think this is because in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it even says this. And the angel of the church in Sardis writes this. These things says the one who is the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you're alive. But actually, you're dead. And in verse 2, he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have found your works for I have not found your works perfect before God. Just a few verses after that in verses 15 and 17 to a separate church, he says, I know your works, that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were either hot or cold. In verse 16, though, it says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And in verse 17, he says, because you say I'm rich, you've become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you're wretched that you're miserable, that you're poor, blind, and naked. The thing is tonight is that for many times, maybe seasons in my life or maybe in your life, is that we were alive. And we had confidence in the fact that we were alive, that we weren't dead. But the truth is, God is coming tonight to look for fruit. Is are you bearing fruit tonight? Do you have fruit on your branches? Are you bearing fruit when you wake up in the morning? Are you bearing fruit on Monday rather than just on Sunday? Are you bearing fruit in your marriage? Are you bearing fruit with your kids? Are you bearing fruit on the job site? Are you bearing fruit? And the truth is, is I think we could all just take a step back and just have a little fruit test. Look at your own life. Just have a little evaluation. What do you reap when, when you get frustrated on Monday? I mean, what happens when things don't go your way? What happens when the kids are acting a fool on Sunday, when you're on your way to church on Sunday night? Like, what are the things that naturally come out of you? I mean, what are the things that when life squeezes you, what comes out? I mean, think about it this way, just very practically and very simply, that if you were to go and you were to take, a, just a, just take, one, of these, take one of these apples, that if I were to squeeze this, what would I get? What type of juice? Not orange juice, not banana juice, not pineapple juice, not any ju other juice than other than apple juice. And I so pray that when my life, when life pressures come around and they squeeze me and they are trying to get a hold of me and things don't go my way and I'm out there and I feel stranded on an island sometimes, is that what they get and what the world gets and what my family gets is that they just get Jesus. Because he is what is on the inside of me, and he is all that is is that it is. Like, when you squeeze me, that you do get love. And when you squeeze me, that you do get peace. And when you squeeze me, that you would get joy and, and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and, and gentleness and self-control. That when life comes my way, is that they just get Jesus. So is that what you're reaping in your life? Would somebody characterize you as one of the most loving people? I mean, here's the truth, like, oh, well, they don't understand, like, I work with them. But it doesn't matter. Like, would they describe you as somebody that just has overwhelming amounts of patience? Come on, I'm holding up a mirror tonight. Would they describe you as somebody that is just gentle? Would your spouse or your kids define you as somebody that has self-control? <laughs> I mean, let's just think about it for a moment is let's just take a little test and just look at our own lives. Is what is on our branches? Is it, a, is it the gifts of the Spirit or not? As I've just said in here, and, and what I love, and, and like I said, and I've said this to you many times before, church, but when I pray and I fast, is it, it God just gets all up in my grill. 
Like he just steps all on my toes and he just he just makes me look back and think back like what about this and what about that and, and were you really hearing from me when you when you did this and did that and had that event and did all this and and I just was thinking back just over the years of just services just as a teenager or even just a couple of years ago maybe where I would just get so undone in his presence. Just I remember there just being times where we were having services over in the gym and when I was a student and, and they would preach the message and, and I didn't know everything. I didn't have all the how-tos memorized and I didn't have maybe my theology just perfect and, and I couldn't quote a bunch of scripture and, and maybe I wasn't doing everything just perfect but I would get so undone in his presence. And I would sit there at the end of those services and I would go over on the right side of the stage and, and I would just sit there just saying, Lord, will you use me for your kingdom? God, will you just send me? God, I will go wherever you want me to go and, and I will do anything that you want me to do. And God, I will say anything that you want me to say that God, everything that I am, I surrender to you. And I remember I would sit there right next to Braid and my brother-in-law now, and we would just sit there and we would pray. And, and I didn't care. The other kids, they could go pick up the basketball, and they could turn on the lights, but they, nobody in the room could stop me pers from pursuing after Jesus. That I had my mindset that I was going to bear much fruit. And I didn't care who would go with me or who I'd have to leave behind. I didn't care what circles I'd have to walk away from. I didn't care because all I cared about was, was I going to bear fruit for him? Was I going to be known as one of his disciples? If, is that if he came back and it was that wedding day, is that, would I be ready as a bride for the bridegroom? That would I be spotless? Would I be blameless? Would I be prepared? Because that was all that mattered. It didn't matter about what I preached. It didn't matter about the fame or popularity. I didn't care about any of that. All I cared about, God, is will I do your will? And what I was allowing him to do was, was to get in my life. And just like this parable, I just allowed him just to dig and to say that, well, that doesn't please me. And just dig and just say, well, that isn't, that isn't what I want. And, and he would just dig some more and say, well, that isn't what I, what I told you to do. And, and, well, he would just dig around here. And, and so my question for you tonight is how deep will you let him dig? Is that he is coming, I believe, with a shovel. And he is trying to get in your life. And how deep will you actually let the Lord dig in your life? That maybe there's some motives and there's some attitudes and there's some, there's some habits and there's some addiction and there's some past mistakes and there's some unforgiveness and there's some bitterness. And, and what he's trying to do is come and dig it up. And how deep will you let him dig? Because the truth is, is I believe that it is, it is voluntary. That you don't have to. That you don't have to let him. Is that the truth is, is that when it comes to that part, is that where he begins to try to touch on some things, is that it may get a little sensitive, and it may be a little unfun or, or unfair maybe because you're just looking at everybody else, and they just, they just keep rocking on, but just life is being thrown your way, and it's just not fun, and, and it's not easy. But can you surrender to him? And the truth is, as I look at times, and, I, and just being the youth pastor, I just, I look at students, and I can see them just, as they can get a hold of Jesus, and they're letting him dig in their lives. And God is really digging away some things, but it seems like over some time, maybe they just get a, get a little bit lukewarm, or, or maybe they get back into their friend circles, or maybe they just, they just decided to say no to that one time, and then it just, I don't know what it is, but they'll just, they'll be really serving him. And all of a sudden, there they go, and then they'll miss a service. And then all of a sudden, they're, they're back with the same crowd. And then all of a sudden, I can even tell in their worship. And this is not me condemning them as their youth pastor. This is me saying that it's not what it once was. In church, no matter how young or how old you are, is, is what pastor said is so, I mean, it just stuck with me. He said, maybe you were ready three years ago. But are you ready tonight? And the truth is there are moments in all of our lives where we are so ready, that, that we are so close and so in tune, and, and he's coming, and, and he's been digging in our lives, and, and there we are. We've been letting him have his way, and he's been blessing us and touching us, and, and we've been so undone in his presence. But then there's other seasons where we are saying you can do anything. that God, you don't, you don't have any rule. You can't reign. You can't have your way. It's, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared for this. That's not easy. Now see with the students and 
their worship will change. And they'll miss that service. And all of a sudden, a month or two later, they're, they're very, very rarely even coming anymore. And this should not be. And what I think many times is that I think that, and this, is, this is, involves me, so I'm not just saying this to you. But I think a lot of times that we even come to church and, and we just view pastor maybe as like our massage therapist. Like, just, like, like just come in and, and we sit down and he just kind of gives us a good message and it feels good. And, and well, we leave out the back door and it's like, well, I feel a little bit better. And the truth is, I think our pastor and I think leaders of the church should really be more like a personal trainer. That they come and they say, listen, here's the growth plan. Here's the word of God. And what we've got to do is that, yes, dietitians and personal trainers, they'll give you a growth plan to say, listen, you need to eat this and stay away from that. You need to hit these weights, do these workouts. You need to do this on Monday through Friday, do all these things. And the truth is that Monday through Friday, I've got a growth plan. That Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day of the week that I've got a growth plan. Is am I acting like Jesus? Am I bearing the fruit that he's called me to bear? Am I doing the things that he's called me to do? Am I saying yes to him in prayer? Am I saying yes to him leading me to fast? Am I saying yes to him laying my hands on the sick? Am I saying yes to him evangelizing? Am I saying yes to him fleeing from sin? Am I saying yes to him? Is you have a growth plan tonight. And I promise you this. I've told our students because I've talked a little bit about this this morning. I said you will be so chiseled. So in shape, you will, be so, you will be so good if you will just follow this book, that if you will just consume it and eat it and just give yourself to it, that you will just memorize it and study it, and, and that when you're lacking faith, that you would just get into this word, because guess what? The word says that faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God, that if you can get in this book, it will increase your faith. And I promise you, it will bless your marriage, and it will bless your family, it will bless the business, it will bless your finances, that if you can just apply this book to your life, it always ends in blessing. Somebody say amen. And don't get me wrong. It don't mean you'll drive the Lexus at the end of the year. It just means that you, you, I promise you, you'll have more peace, though. You'll have more joy. And one of the things, let me just even share this, is that, you know, I think sometimes that people think, well, it's just, it's just natural. Like, well, it's just natural because maybe you're in the ministry or it's just natural because they were raised or it's just natural because now they're 80 and they've been doing this for so many years that the truth is it's not just natural. It's the fact that we, we come up to this word every day and we say, God, you are my daily bread. You are the daily manna that I need. You are something that I need every single day. And every day I've got to come to prayer. And every single day I've got to open up this book and read it. And every day I've got to exercise my faith. And every single day I've got to keep coming. And I've got to keep coming. And I've got to keep coming. And he's going to just keep on digging. And he's going to keep on digging. And he's going to keep on digging. Because this is the process. Is there was a gentleman by the name of George Shotgun Shuba. He actually played seven seasons for the, for the Dodgers, and he actually went down in history as the first pitch hitter to hit a home run in the World Series. And he hit that home run, and the commentators of the ball game were watching, and, and they said this about George Shotgun. They said, his swing is as natural as a smile. To which the ball game ends, and it was kind of from that moment that they heard that everybody was saying it and, and creating buzz around it, and all the teammates were chiming in about it, is that his swing is as natural as a smile. But when he got in the interview, he said, oh, you just think it's as natural as a smile. He said, oh, no. He said, what you don't see is that every single day I take my 44-ounce bat, and I swing that bat 600 times. And I do that seven days a week, so 40 time, 4,200 times a week, I'm sitting there swinging. I'm practicing. And what you don't see is all of that's happening. And maybe you don't realize it, but your pastor is that he is swinging every day. Is that no, he don't just he didn't just learn to pray like that. He swung every day. He didn't just learn to lay hands on the sick like that. He prayed every day. That he fasted throughout the year. That he was doing this because this is who he was. That no, it don't just come because he was just born into this. It's because he put his mind to it. Because he decided that he was going to be disciplined and build the habit of prayer and the habit of fasting and the discipline of all of this. Because this is not just easy. Come. You've got to work for it. And will you work for it? Is will you allow God to dig on your life? Will you allow yourself to be disciplined? The problem is, is that a lot of people have uphill hopes, but downhill habits. 
as I have hopes, is that this year will be different maybe. But if my habits don't change, then it's nothing more than just an uphill hope. But I believe this year, if we can put our minds to it and we can actually say, God, you can have your way. God, have your way in my life. Because I want this year to be different for you. I really do. I want this year to be so different for you that, that, that you receive more peace and blessing than ever before. And this is one of the things, is I remember a story. Is we were actually at a youth camp, and, and I had a student that had come to me, and he, he actually had showed me his inhaler, and, and all that inhaler is it just said 002, to which I don't have asthma. I've never had an inhaler before, and so I just said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, I have two puffs left. I said, okay, what do you mean? And he said, well, typically if I have an asthma attack come on is, is I need three. And we're at the beginning of the week at church camp, and so I, I, I slightly get panicked just thinking, like, well, what in the world? Like, he's going to have to go home. Like, his parents are going to have to come get him. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I just said to him, I said, well, listen, if you ever get in a, in a bind or a pinch and, and you just you get worried about yourself, you just take off and you just go. And I said, I'll be right there behind you. But do not get in a, cell, get in a position where you compromise. I said, okay. And so we get through the day, and it is 95 degrees. It's hot. It's humid. We're outside there. And. In late May, early June, we, get, we make it through the entire day, and we get into service, and, and we're going through worship. We get through the message. Well, we get into altar, and I have this random stranger come up to me, and I don't know who he is, and he's in a frantic, I can tell, and he says, hey, are you, are you, are you Pastor Brandon? I said, yeah, 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 I am. He said, well, you've got a student over here, and he's, he's having an asthma attack right now. I need your key, and I said, where is he? And the truth is, I, what, what he didn't know and the thing is, is I can't practice this, but I'd been praying and fasting coming into that week. As my faith was a little bit stronger than now, he caught me about a week prior to that, probably this wouldn't have happened. But my faith was so strong. I mean, I was ready to do anything. And I said, where is he? And he said, he's right over here. I said, well, take me to him. And so we walk over there to him, and I see him, and he is bawling. He is trying his hardest to get a breath. I've never had an asthma attack, but I've, I've later asked him and I've asked others, what does that feel like? He said, it feels like an elephant is sitting on my chest. It feels like somebody just punched me in the gut and I have no air and I, and I can't get a breath. And as soon as I walk over to him and I see him, I said, we're praying for this boy. And I saw two of my students, I said, let's lay hands on him. And so we did and we laid our hands on him and he was healed right then. I mean, he fell out in the power of God. He never took a hit from an inhaler. He never went to the nurse's station. He didn't have to call mom and dad. But I can tell you that because I'd spent some time with the Lord, just saying, Lord, if you'll make me more like you, that maybe my faith would be increased, that I could lay my hands on those that are sick, those that have cancer, those that are having asthma attacks, whatever it may be, that the lost mother-in-law can come home, the lost sons and daughters can come home, the lost grandsons and granddaughters can come home, that I believe that if we can get a hold of heaven tonight, that we can see signs, wonders, and miracles. Somebody put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. That God, with God, anything is possible. And I so desperately want to see this. That I want to see this in 2023 is that we would actually see somebody get healed just right here, like, like not back 20 years ago, not in the old sanctuary. I want to see something happen right here. I want to see a marriage restored right here. I want to see a lost son and daughter run down to an altar and surrender themselves just right here. And I believe it can happen this year. And this is what the story said. He said just one more year. I've come for three years, and there's been no fruit. But I believe this year is going to be different, is what he said. If I can just dig it, and if I can just put some fertilizer around, if I can just dung it, if I can dig it, and if I can dung it, if I can do that, if I can, if I can just do that just one more year. And so can I just tell you, church, can I encourage you, just hold on. Just try it one more year. Just try one more year. Don't just, don't just stay the same way because the tree didn't say just, oh, just stay there the same that you've been the past three years. But there's going to be some process that has to happen. If you're going to have to let the Lord dig, because they didn't let the tree just sit there, but they dug. They spread some fertilizer around it. You know, you know the smell of manure? It don't smell good. And the truth is in your life is there's going to be some things that come up that aren't going to smell good. 
And the process of God doing something maybe may not smell good. The process of that happening may not be convenient. It may, it may not be easy. It may be hard. It, it, might, it might, might take some, some time. I don't know what it is. But it might not just fall into your lap. So that's why I need to tell you just stay planted. Stay planted just one more year. Just stay planted. Let God just, just work, do a work in you. Just stay planted. Let God do something in you. Let him, let him do something in your family. Just, just one more year. Stay planted. Don't, don't be okay with just the comfortable mindset and just the, the regular, but just, just allow yourself to get dug on just a little bit. So as I get ready to close with this, Caleb, if you'd come. As the process, as I mentioned, can be stinky. As I can tell you in my own life, what it's looked like for me is it's looked like swallowing my pride. Getting on a phone call and saying, I'm sorry. What it's looked like is it's been the one that's had to apologize first. (laughs) Come on, somebody. What it's looked like is it's looked like that even when I don't feel like it, that I have to show up. What it's looked like is it's saying no to some things and saying yes to him. Is that I can't say the same that I've been the past three years. And this year, I want this year to be so different. And I want it for you. So here's my question for you this year is how deep will you allow him to dig? How deep will you allow him to dig? So, Father, I pray, Lord, for every single person under the sound of my voice. That, Father, that your Holy Spirit would walk in this room right now. And you would begin to work. That you'd begin to dig on us. So that we might bear much fruit. That we would examine our lives, that, God, that we would give you everything this year. With everybody standing, heads bowed and eyes eyes closed. Tonight, this is the simple request, the simple question. If you want to allow God to dig on your life this year so that you could be more fruitful, more blessed, have more peace and more joy, if that's you, would you just say that's me and slip your hand up? That you say, I fully surrender, God. You can have this year. You can have my life. You can have my marriage. You can have the kids. You can have that situation. God, you can have it all. That, God, what I desire is I desire to be closer to you. And if that's you, if you raise your hand, would you come find a place to pray and seek him, just allowing him to dig? Would you even allow him to whisper to you right now that I believe he'll give you a growth plan? I believe he'll give you some instruction. Or maybe you need to release that and forgive that person. Maybe you need to be faithful to the house of God and and bring your family this year. That you need to to make the declaration, as for me and my house, as we will serve the Lord. That you're going to jump off and say, I'm going to pray and fast. That I'm going to give God my everything this year. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would do all these things for all these individuals, all these husbands and the wives. God, the sons and the daughters, all the marriages that are represented. God, do it for the family. God, do it for this church, God. Do it for Victory Worship Center that God that we would bear more fruit this year than ever before God that we desire Father that your will would be done
give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. Oh, I give you my soul. Lord, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, oh, every moment I'm awake. Lord, Your desire. 
myself to you. is you got the growth plan. Let them dig. Because I believe his desire for your life, for every family, every marriage, is that you'd be fruitful. Is that you would, at the end of this year, be able to walk around with more than you can contain. And that when somebody bumps into you, that they just get that love and that joy and that peace. And there's no question, who is Lord of your life? here's the deal is don't even seek signs and wonders and miracles yeah you can ask for it but just seek him and as you just get closer to him the faith just comes and the supernatural it just comes but just seek him like it just the answers they just come like the, yeah you can sit there and beg and beg and beg but it seems like most of the time that when when I really get the most clarity and the most vision are the times where I just come down and I'm just giving myself away and I'm just sitting here just kneeling down at his feet. Just saying, God, all I am is it is yours. Just one more time, can you just with hands raised? Father, we give ourselves away. God, all that we are, we are yours. That's so why we're believing that this year, God, there will be something that changes and something that happens that, God, that we're not going to stay comfortable. We're not going to stay the same way that we have been in the years past. But, God, we're going to change something. We're going to allow your Holy Spirit to come in and dig and fertilize, God, the things of our life so that, God, that you may come back at the end of the year realizing that there is so much fruit on our lives. That, God, that our marriages would be blessed, our families would be blessed, our, our kids would be saved, our, our families would be delivered, our, the addictions would be broke, God. We're believing that the generational curses, God, would be undone in the name of Jesus. That, Father God, that we're going to send the word, Father. So the God that you would do what only you can do. That your responsibility is the outcome, but our responsibility is obedience. So God, it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, remember, listen, digging starts small, 6 a.m. If you can't make the 6 a.m. digging, digging's going to happen at 6 p.m. I just encourage you, get the shovel. We're going we gonna to let the Lord just dig on us all week long. Amen. All right. Well, listen, go hug a brother. Go hug a sister. And just tell them God loves them. And have a great week. God love you. We love you. God bless.